Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Financially and environmentally beleaguered energy and chemicals group Sasol is working to reset its business for a low carbon world. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the emerging strategy. Hi Terence. Hi Sasol. Now Sasol is currently a large carbon emitter and has acknowledged that climate change is a top risk. Yes, um, Sasol is, is a huge carbon emitter as a, as a business. Um, most of its carbon emissions, about 66 million tonnes a year, um, are emitted in South Africa. And of those, most of those are centred around the Secunda complex in Mpumalanga. So it's got a, a big problem in terms of the world moving towards a, a lower carbon economies around the world. And uh, its business has to be reshaped and reset, as they say, for that new environment. And therefore, it has a uh, process underway called Future Sassel, uh, where it's looking to reduce its carbon footprint materially. And pressure is mounting on the group from shareholders and stakeholders. Yeah, for years and years, environmental groups have been unhappy with Sassel's uh, 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 carbon emission performance, its emission performance, much like uh, Eskom comes under a lot of criticism as well as our biggest carbon emitter. Sassel too is a big area of focus and uh, we've had uh, environmental activists um, looking at Sassel very c closely. The new trend though is that there's now shareholder activists that are coming into AGMs and uh, raising the issue very, very forcefully, as has been the case with many energy companies around the world. Sassel's tended to rebuff these requests for votes and did again this year with uh, just uh, just Share and the Wraith Foundation looking for a vote this year and they've sort of kicked that can down the road and will have, we'll have a non-binding vote on their climate strategy only at the 2021 AGM and if uh, shareholders reject its climate strategy it's going to then have to do a, a, re, a, a rethink, well they've committed to a rethink but uh, this company which is a large carbon emitter is coming under intense pressure as all energy companies around the world are, some are, uh, are moving quite aggressively. We see um, some of the major oil majors now looking at saying that they're no longer uh, international oil companies, but they want to be international energy companies. And likewise, uh, Sassel is having to transform itself. And what is it doing to change goals and is it enough? Well, the, the main thing is it has this uh, three-pronged strategy of reducing emissions and then transforming the way it does business and then ultimately wanting to shift its portfolio, its product portfolio to a car low carbon world. That's the sort of overarching strategy. But within that, uh, the focus is on the feedstock. So um, at the moment, coal is the main feedstock. They convert that coal into hydrogen and then they put that hydrogen through a process called Fischer-Tropsch to produce uh, 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 fuels and chemicals. Uh, that process of producing that hydrogen is where all the carbon, most of the carbon emissions arise in Secunda. Sasselberg has already converted to Mozambique gas, so they've had that conversion, and the uh, immediate focus seems to be to, to replace as much coal as possible with gas. Now that's a difficulty because uh, Sassel does have gas in Mozambique and gas does flow through the pipeline at the moment. But uh, those the Panda and Tamani fields are depleting and they haven't really been able to find in southern Mozambique enough gas to replace it. So there will be, I suppose, a strategy to import gas through LNG, through Poly Maputo, to keep that uh, flow into both uh, Sasselberg and Secunda increasingly, if, if, if possible. And uh, they are looking at a major position also in the Rivuma Basin. They aren't directly involved. Those are the international energy companies are the ones that are really involved there. And they have flighted again this idea of a, a mega pipeline from northern Mozambique down to its operations. But it couldn't be the sole off-taker because it would have to be a, a really large pipeline to make sense. And that is a, a long way off. Um, I, th I think the strategy uh, is to have more gas, but I think the immediate focus will be probably to import more LNG. And the issue there is all about economics. So that's the, the, the one strategy. The other is to have a, a scale up of renewable energy across its group. And uh, we see they've got this plan to invest in 600 megawatts of renewable energy 
into its operations to displace carbon-based electricity. And uh, linked to that is very much ultimately is to they, they're wanting to become a green hydrogen leader in South Africa. We know they are a global hydrogen reader, leader because they produce uh, hydrogen from coal. Coal does, isn't a great source of hydrogen, but the world is shifting um, to uh, a place where you can start producing green hydrogen using low-cost renewable electricity, uh, putting that through, uh, to combining with that with water and an electrolyzer to produce uh, carbon-free hydrogen, green hydrogen, and that they wanting to be a major leader in this space. And we know that the rest of the world too, people that have got good solar and wind resources, countries such as Australia, are looking to become a green hydrogen superpowers and we definitely are South Africa lagging in, in this fight, in this battle to be a hydrogen superpower. We too have formidable wind and solar resources. We've got the land and the, uh, the renewable electricity is now the cheapest form of electricity in South Africa. And the, the key here will be then to plug that in to a falling cost of, uh, of electrolyzers. And that's the, the, the big next component. Can the electrolyzers come in cost competitively. At this stage, Cecil claims it can't, and therefore they have this big gas focus and a potential mega pipeline. But that gas as a bridging fuel to a low carbon economy, that bridge seems to be getting shorter by the day, and the world is turning against gas quite aggressively. So I think uh, uh, we ask whether it's enough. I think that the, the uh, Cecil's, uh, I think, eventually embraced the green hydrogen approach. They know that they can make power fuels because they already make, uh, through the Fisher Troughs mm -hmm. process, uh, fuels from uh, synthetic fuels. They know they can do that, but I think they're still more comfortable with gas. I think that uh, this is again where I think climate activists and even climate shareholders are going to have a say. I think there's going to be a push for them to do more on the green hydrogen front, to be more ambitious and to be maybe less ambitious in terms of a, a massive pipeline from, a very, it's a very far away, uh, the, the, the distance to northern Mozambique uh, to Secunda is, is sort of the, the distance between Casablanca and London. It's not, a, it's not just right next door, mm. it's a, it would be a major pipeline. So I think that will be an interesting discussion, whether Sassel's doing enough on the green hydrogen front and is putting too many of its eggs in the shift from a feedstock a fossil fuel, a very dirty f fossil fuel feedstock in the form of coal to a less dirty but yet still dirty fossil fuel feedstock in gas and whether it shouldn't be more ambitious on the green hydrogen front. Thanks for speaking to us, Terence. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter. <laughs>